Hey guys, what's up? I'm Sino and I'm back again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to find your perfect sensitivity on console and PC. The reason I say console and PC is because both of these platforms have some settings that need to be tweaked depending on the platform. Don't worry, I'm going to help you guys out right away. If you guys want to check out the past videos on this, they're on the channel, they're my most viewed, I'll put them in the info cards at the top right. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to want to do is shooting range is basically where you can practice your tracking, your recoil control, and the ability to flick on from one enemy to the other. You're going to want to cherish this like it is your best friend because it is going to help you become 10 times better. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to make an attachment guide for every single operator. But let's get started using Sledge because he's the most common operator, although Ubisoft has nerfed him like, I don't know, 45 times. So the first thing I see when I get in is I'm extremely slow. We'll fix that in a second, but the first thing we want to do is go to general to set out whatever the defaults are. So squad privacy, they, these two are aren't really, you know, important at all. Ping is if you can ping for your teammates to see if you have it off. Look, I'm spamming up on my D-pad right now and nothing's pinging. So if you want to ping, which you should be able to want, you should keep that on. Display performance metrics is your internet. What's happening? Are you losing frames? I have minimal metrics on my personal account in the bottom left. As you can see, 60 FPS in one ping. When you go into options again, you're going to have connectivity feedback, which is if you're getting rejected by your server, if the host has disconnected, if you're losing FPS, if you have packet loss, jitter, or latency. I have icons only to see if I'm lagging so I can know what's wrong in the game if it's a really important ranked game. Down here, you have cycle inside camera groups, which is how fast you can navigate from one camera group to the other, like bell cameras to normal cameras or cameras to mozzies or bulletproof cameras to valve cameras. It's how fast you can do it. I keep it off because it isn't really it isn't really useful for me. Drone after prep is when you throw down your drone, do you get off of it automatically? Do you have to get off of it manually? Or it'll exit unless you are controlling your own drone. Personally, I have it at automatic because in case you get spawn peak, you need to have this on automatic at all times. Down here, it's match replay is where you can go watch your games to see what you did wrong or what the other team was doing to make sure that they won or you won. You need to see what they did wrong, what you did right, or vice versa. I keep this on at all times because it helps cross-play matchmaking. This is one of the most sensitive subjects. I personally hate it, but I still do it because I'm playing. I have to keep it on, so I recommend you keep this on so you don't have a horrible experience playing against Xbox cheaters. There's, there's PlayStation cheaters, but this makes a better universal experience. For PC, there's this in Stadia. It doesn't really matter. Stadia, PC, both the same thing. Both have access to a keyboard and mouse, so just keep it on. It's understandable. For HUD presets, there's your compass. Rule of thumb, if you're new to this game, you can keep it on if you want. But as you can see, you see how bulky it is in the bottom of your screen? If you're in a like 1v1 situation and you have to like look down at an angle, this is going to get you killed. So personally, I have my compass off. It's absolutely useless for you. The ping location helper is also pretty nice. So if you're new to the game and you're like, oh, like this is a room and I don't know what this is. If I click up on the D-pad at the bottom right, you can see it says recoil lane. It'll tell you what the location is without needing to use your compass. Keep that on if you're new to the game or if you don't know all the rooms or pings. Loadout. I don't, I don't really know what your loadout would be useful for, but I keep it on just in case. But I take off the inputs because I also find that very useless. Because if you hold LB, you know you've used one and you have one grenade left. If you click RB, you know you have a sledgehammer, so you need 25 hits before it even runs out. So it's basically useless. Down here, we have health. Honestly, I think health is one of the things that will get you killed instantly. I have it on number only because if you have like the red bar, when you get shot, it'll go down and it'll start blinking a bright red if you're in a 1v1 situation. And I find that stressful. If you like stressful situations, keep it on, man. More power to you. This is how long your stats have effect. So, like, if you have a mute jammer, if you have a Thatcher effect on you, if you're getting Finca Surge, it's how long it'll be lasting. I've played this game long enough to know that I don't really need this. Your stance indicator is at your bottom. I can't. There it is. Bottom left, right next to your health. It tells you if you're proning, standing, or crouching. I have it off because, again, I'm not Helen Keller. I can see if I'm crouch proning or standing in the game, so I have that off. D, B, and O, which is down but not out. So when you're down, you have this little cross on your screen to let you know how much time you have before you bleed out. 
I have it off because if your teammate come get, eh, if your teammate comes to get you, then he comes to get you. If he doesn't, then hey man, that sucks for you. Critical warnings is like reload, being detected outside, or being line pinged. I have this on because sometimes the line ping glitches out and you can't even see it happen. Action reminder is to let you know what's going on during the game, like what's happening, what the input is, what the action, so barricade, don't barricade, icons, or just be input only. Personally, I just have the default, or I have input only because it keeps it minimalistic. I have the action reminder to 50 because I don't want a big X in the one situation, so we keep it at 50. The action duration bar is also off for me because I don't need to see the bar because I know what I'm doing. The reload reminder is off because I can see my bullets in the bottom right and when they're running out. So all of those are basically useless to me. Personally, if you're new, I'd recommend keeping all of this on so you can learn faster and by playing quick match you can learn very, very fast. I have all my crosshairs on because I don't find it to be anything to bother you during a ranked game. Your grenade indicator is useless. It's not useless, but it's useless to you if you don't want to get blown up without seeing, so keep it on. Observation tool reticle, I have it off because it's just when you're on your drone or your zero cam. You can have it on because if you're on a zero camera of Valkyrie, you want to precisely ping something, you can, but I don't really need it. Kill confirmation is a little X on the screen when you kill somebody. I find it useful, but honestly, it's, it's like a 50-50 personal preference, so if you want to use it, you can. Your hit indicator is to see if you're hit near a bullet and it'll like pop up on your screen so honestly if you're newer to the game keep all of these on because it's better for you your device area of effect is when you put down a malusi or a jaeger or a banshee it'll show what's happening and how far it can reach before it is triggered by an attacker or a defender i find this very useful and i keep this on all the time your objective markers is like A site, B site, the hostage, or the secure area. I think that's anything for casual. No, we're good. Pings, again, it's the same thing as general. I keep them on. Opponent pings, I keep them on. Opponent rim light, keep this on if you don't want to die because I've gotten mixed up with my teammates and the other team so many times without having this off or without having this on because all you can see in the back. So, Honestly, keep it on if you don't want to die. Teammate outlines I keep on so I don't wall bang. I keep their icons and I take the gamer tag off because I see who they are in case I need help late round. Match header is at the top. As you can see, I'm sledged. That's the match header. I don't need that, but I keep it on anyways because it doesn't bother me during the game. Reinforcement pools, how many reinforcements you have. You have 10 altogether. You'll know if you run out if you click X on a wall and you can't reinforce it, so I keep it off. I diffuse timers, how long it takes to diffuse the bomb if you're in a ranked game or a casual match, off. Match timer is to see how much is left in your drone phase, prep phase, or your action phase. I keep it on. Round number, very useful. Match updates is if you can if you get like a frost kill, if you get somebody downed, or if you finish somebody and you get 120 points. I keep it off. It's very useless. You'll know if you killed somebody if it comes up in the chat. Bands. It's not really useful. It's not useless. It's it's one of those where it doesn't really affect you in any way possible. So I just keep it on. Score updates is your kills confirmed as well. So match updates is like what's going on during the game, like who dies and who doesn't die. So I keep it off and I keep these two off because this is your 120 points. So they're both basically the same thing, but this one is who dies in the chat. Destroy drones. I mean, there's 10 drones in total in the beginning, so I don't find it useful at all. So I just keep it off. Objective tracker. Again, I find it useless. If you are a beginner, please, please, please keep this on. Versus update. Not really. It's not really useful like it's a 1v5 1v4 1v3 i think you're gonna know how many people you kill if you don't and you want to keep it on that's perfectly fine a gameplay warning is it's telling you you don't have enough of something or you can't do it because you're sitting at a certain angle that cannot allow you to do it and that's for voice chat operator guides observation panels and operator cards it's not really this is they're all useless except for the gameplay warnings all of these are useless because it's all for match replay voice chat your match your match helpers which is usually in a game when you click the menu button it's not really useful for you in a game that's why it's marked other now let's move on to the most important tab today the audio maybe sensitivity is more important but i think audio is everything if you have a digital output which is a elgato or a stream deck or a capture card 
I keep it on digital output, but if you keep it on headset earphone, you can play with the same amount. This just outputs at a higher amount of bits. So honestly, it's personal preference. If you find that you load into the game and you can't hear anything, just switch it to the other one and click apply and you'll be fine. Subtitles, unless you like to play it like it's Call of Duty campaign, there's, there's no use for it. Just keep it off. Master volume, I keep at 100. Music, I bring down all the way to zero because I hate the music in this game unless it's a banger. And the only music that's a banger is the consulate one, so we can bring it up to 10. So, dialogue volume is like Thermite saying a really big fucking hole coming up. So, honestly, very useless. Alright, so on console, this is the most important audio setting. So, for hi-fi, everybody says hi-fi is the best, hi-fi is the best. It's really not, though. I say night mode is the best because Siege has a specific channel for night mode. It basically isolates everything except for your footsteps and plays it as loud as it can in your night mode through your headset. Because when you play hi-fi, it plays every other clutter, fuse charge, sledge, buck, it plays everything at the same amount of volume. But when you put it at night mode, it prioritizes the footsteps because it knows you're not playing with your headset as loud as you would be if you had it on hi-fi. So that's why I keep it at night mode at all times. My voice chat isn't on, so it's at zero. It doesn't really matter. If you want to put it on, then you do it all the way back in. Display, keep VSync off so it doesn't tear. So your refresh rate can stay at 144 or 64 or 50 hertz. If you're on a new gen, this is what you're going to get. I prioritize performance, but I'm going to keep it at resolution because I'm streaming on a capture card right now. But if you prioritize performance, you get 140 FPS, as you can see at the bottom left corner. You put it at resolution, it puts you right back down to 95 slash 60. Field of view, I keep it at 89 because it keeps that nice median that doesn't let you let your gun get all out of control and it doesn't stretch out your screen so far where other things start to bug out if you're too far from it. This is what I find as a personal preference. If you like it at 90, you go ahead, my friend. HUD display, I keep at 88 and it brings in my operators much closer as you can see at the top of the screen everything has shrunk a little bit and I find this much more useful menu display area this is the main menu it's not really useful at all I keep it at 90 I think is what I keep it at and for brightness I keep it at 65 on a normal if it, you're trying to play on if you're playing on night mode because you can do that here look if you turn it on no, that's high contrast if you turn on night mode it goes all dark Play with a higher brightness if you're on night mode because it takes away all the blue lights. Without night mode, keep it at 65. That's a nice average. It's what I keep it at. It's what helps me the most. You can see people and your screen isn't too bright. Wow, these are a lot of settings. All right, let's do this really fast. Vibration is if your controller vibrates when you shoot, throw a C4, or get shotgun in the forehead by a finger running at you full speed, keep it disabled. Gadget deployment is if you throw something down, do you have to manually use it or do you want it to go off automatically? Advanced is the easiest way to have it. Standard does not work because you have to hold and you can't cancel any action. I have my drone deployment at advanced because... Okay, I might cut out. My fault. But I don't know what just happened. Drone deployment is if you throw down a drone and you click on it again to open it. Compared to standard, if you just throw it, it'll automatically put it in. So you're going to have it at advanced so you could go into it when you want to advanced. And when you want it at the right time because if you go into it automatically and a guy runs out on you it's not going to be that useful for you your practice settings are basically aim assist for the ai mode so training grounds shooting range and that's about it so keep it disabled so you don't get favored when you're doing sea hunts because you need to warm up properly these are the newest things coming out where you can lean I don't know if it's going to work properly yet, so I don't know how to use these. So I keep mine at default because it's for people that are lefty, people who are playing tactical bumper crouch, which I don't know what the hell that is. I think that's what Mazo Mitsu uses, but I don't find it to be useful. So I just keep it at default. Look inversion is if you use it, you look, I'm looking down right now. It looks up. You look up. It looks down. That's what look inversion is. It's pretty much useless unless you're a pilot, which I don't think you are. So keep it off. All right, controller rotation, I've gotten thousands of questions about this. It's basically how fast your stick reaches your full maximum speed. Updated keeps it at turtle, sl turtle sloth straight. There we go. Classic makes it much faster to move around, but I'm playing on 1020 right now, so it's still pretty slow. Now, keep it at classic if you like to play fast sensitivity. If you want to play slow sensitivity, still keep it at classic, but adjust 
do not use it at updated because your aim will be inconsistent. Vertical sensitivity. We have to keep that lower than your horizontal because it'll make it all out of whack when you try to control recoil. So personally, I think I keep mine at 25 or 26 and my horizontal all the way up to 70. When you start out this game, you will not be used to this fast sensitivity. So I recommend playing 65 at the beginning and using it and progressing up as you play. I play 25, 74 and I use my dead zone at 10 and this one at 5 because your left stick is only how you walk, how you move, how you sprint. It's not really precise. I keep my right stick as low as possible so I can aim in and make those little micro aggressions and little changes that you can't do if you kept it on a higher dead zone. But I keep my left dead zone at a high amount is because when I try to go up the stairs, I want a slow walk. I just opposed to if I just ran at a guy full speed, he'd just shoot me in the face. So that's what you do for your sensitivities and your dead zones. This is where you can customize every single microscope. If you know you're just good with one sensitivity and you just want to adjust it, just adjust one and you can keep it for every single scope. If you know you like to do things at the micro, micro management area, you go to this and you micro adjust every single one. So my 1.5 scope is on sledge. So let's say, oh, I don't think this is, I don't think this is fast enough. Let's make it a little faster. So we'll bump it up to 27 and then we'll say, all right. I like this a little better, so we're going to switch over to another op like Ash. We're going to use the R4C and say, let's try out the red dot C. We want to see how our 1.0 op. Oh, this is perfect. I don't have to adjust it. And then you go through every single operator and so forth, and you just adjust every single one. And that's how your adjustment for controller ADS sensitivity works. I'm going to release my settings in a later video this month, or we can just base it off of that if you want to. I'm just going off my memory right now, so it might not be as precise. Aim, keep it at hold because if you switch it to toggle, what happens is if you click LT, it'll stay aimed in until you unclick LT. So it's not really worth it and it'll get you killed a lot of times. I tried it one time, it was not great. Advanced controller options. Honestly, if you like to play it at crackhead sensitivity, you can use it to accelerate how fast your controller is if you already haven't made this at max. But that's personal preference. I don't personally use any of these settings except for your horizontal ADS. I keep it at five and I keep a, my vertical at three and I take everything off because it'll make it way too fast and way too unprecise and it'll make your aim unpredictable. Your outer threshold is probably the most important thing here. I keep it at 10 and it makes your stick respond faster to however fast you aim in. So that's how fast I keep it. And I find it that it helps so much more. When so keep your threshold on or don't use advanced settings if you find you're inconsistent. It's fine if you don't. If you're still starting out in this game, it's fine to have micro progression. It's okay. I know it's hard. This game sucks. I know. But you got this. I'm with you to the very end and I'm going to need to adjust because, hey man, this game's pretty hard. And I'm still bad at it. So my job is to help you out as much as I can. Accessibility is how your game looks. So if you want your colors to be orange, look at the top, it changed from blue to orange. See the little ash icon, it'll switch back to blue, back to orange, back to blue. Or you could go to red for the other team and you can just adjust those. Or you can adjust your optics if you have a colorblind issue. Or if you just want a different color. So if I want purple or I want to aim in, wow, it's purple, how cute. But if you want to play with an opacity, which I do recommend, because if you don't, you won't be able to see the enemy's head. So play with an opacity like 40, so you can see your scope and the opponent's head. So look, now it's more see-through. So now you can see the thing behind it and not just the red objective that you saw before. Yes, screen shake intensity. I have this off. So if a thermite breaches the wall, your whole screen will shake for minutes on end. Have it off. It's not worth it to have on. Even though it makes the game look cooler, it's not worth it if you're playing it competitively. And if you're just playing casually and for fun as a hobby, you can keep it at medium or default. But some people have had epilepsy reactions to these. And some people have actually had seizures to the ying because of how much the screen was shaking while her ability was going off and flashing the screen. So I don't recommend it, so I just keep it off. Your colors, personal preference, and this is your chat. This just doesn't work anymore. So keep it off because it just doesn't work. It's not worth it. And my friends, that is all of your siege layout. That's every single setting confused and infused into your head within 20 minutes of explaining. I have a dry throat right now. Pause. But 
this is what you want to do. You want to come into the shooting train and you want to just train your aim. Of course, my aim is not going to be great because I don't really remember my settings, so I'm just playing on a fresh account. But you want to just fresh practice. Why? All you want to do is practice, 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 because repetition is going to make you the best player in the game. If you guys want some quick settings for these, all you're going to do is come over here. You're going to shoot options, make your round duration 30 seconds, make it 100 HP, headshots only off. Unless you're an absolute goat and you like to practice, that's what I do. Have infinite magazine ammo on and keep it at medium. So look, when they spawn in, it's not going to be as close and not, not going to spawn in as far. Look, two at a time. If you want to bump that up, you're just going to click abort. You're going to go over to options again. And then you're going to bump it up to four. And when you shoot it, look how many, as you can see. And you're just going to want to warm up. And that's how you warm up, ladies and gentlemen, and find your perfect sensitivity on console. And on PC is the same thing, except for your graphics resolution, because we're very limited on console with that. So just know what your PC can handle and adjust based on that. I can't tell you what your PC can handle because I don't live with you. If you wanted that, you could just tell me I'll move into your house tomorrow. But it's okay. Hope you guys had a great time watching this. I hope you guys understood. I'll be pushing this video as fast as possible. Check out my Twitch and WGG and use code CINO at checkout. Love you guys and have a great day.